Hi, my name is Phil Topnos. I work on the PowerCat team, and today we're going to talk about the Common Data Services Role-Based Access Control. And I've got a few slides up front, but really we're going to do this through demos so that you can actually see the effect that the CDS's built-in security can play on the records that you're trying to protect. And so if you look at the Common Data Service overall, and we often look at it in this kind of funnel-like diagram, uh, the Common Data Service at, the, at its foundation has security, and that's what we're going to be focusing on, and also show that how it's secured at the API level, so that any use of this data, whether through it's a model-driven app, a custom or a Canvas app, or directly through the API for a report or something else, is all protected. And then, of course, this all cascades up to everything else around the logic, which we're not going to focus on this, but we have other sessions in this, in this, um, in this playlist that cover data validation, data modeling, e-discovery, and those sort of things. So all of this stuff you know, comes after security, but security is at the foundation of it. And so we're going to focus here on the left-hand side. And to show how the common data service differs from uh, other role-based access control models for applications, if you look at like a typical model, you're running software on top of a database and you have to decide, you have to put security on it. And so often what will happen is people will build a, an RBAC layer, like an administrative interface and control between the database and the application. So not only is this something else new that you have to build and test, and the testing can get complex because it is so critical to get it right, but also what happens then when reports are built on this data, they're done directly off the data and they bypass all this. So some of this sensitive data that you were trying to protect gets exposed accidentally. And as you look, you know, as you move forward, if you, as you build your second application on this, now you have the choice to either have to duplicate this administrative interface. And so you've got two places to control user administration and two places to test and two sets of code. And you still have this you know, risk that it can be leaked out through uh, reports that go directly to the data. Or you start building a common role-based access control, kind of a common administrative layer that both programs inherit from. And so this RBAC layer now has to understand the needs of different programs and really becomes uh, you know, a program in itself. And so the way the common data service differs from this is the role-based access control, the security is built in at the data source. And so every request for data is authenticated in the context of a person and only what that person is allowed to see is, is returned. And so that, that means that you have the configuration and the security and the administration of this already handled. That UI already exists, and we're going to be seeing it here in a second. But also, all consumers of that data behave the same way and respond and return the same data based upon who that user is. So within the common data service, we've got organization-owned records, and we'll talk about how those can be secured using the different controls on security roles. And that's these here, create, read, write, delete, append, append to, assign, and share. And so we'll show that how even though records are available across your organization, how you can still secure them so different users or groups of users have different access to those or more limited access. And then we'll talk about how users and teams can be assigned ownership of records and how we can use that ownership, including the team that a member or business unit that a member is a part of and the structure of business units so that we can use that hierarchical structure to control visibility and, and uh, access to records. And then outside of that, I'll show how to share individual records with users or teams to kind of do exception cases or other rules that you want to have in order to give broader access to records. And then finally, we'll talk about field security profiles or access to individual columns and those are controlled, then you can, you can control who can create, read, and write those columns. And again, this applies across the system, right? So at the API level in model-driven apps, Canvas apps, custom apps, and reports. Now, before we start looking within the common data service itself, another area of security is within the environment. And if we edit the settings for this particular environment, we see that there's no security group selected. But if you assign a security group to this environment, then only the licensed users in that security group will appear in the list of users that you can even assign security roles to. And so that's one layer of security you have for even getting into this environment. Now the user we're going to be working with today is this user, Pradeep Gupta. And we're going to use these records uh, to test his access. And so this window here, the one at the sushi in the corner, I'm an administrator, so I have access to everything. And so I've got uh, two types of records, user owned, and we can see the owners here. And these are owned by users or teams. And they have a couple of fields associated with them that we're going to use field level security to control. 
And then org-owned. Org-owned are the other type. They aren't associated with the user or team. They're owned by the entire organization, but you can still set permissions on them, and we'll talk about how that is. Each one of these org-owned records also has a related record as well. Now, if I come over here then to Pradeep, when I look at Pradeep's window, just to kind of keep these two straight, Pradeep's window has a fox in the corner, and he's always going to be on the right-hand half of the screen. So when I'm looking at a browser that's only on the right-hand half, that's Pradeep. And we can see now he currently has no access to this. So if I paste in the same app here, this one here, Pradeep doesn't have access. And that's because he doesn't have any security roles assigned at all. And so let's assign a security role to Pradeep. So we can see the security roles available. I've created this one called Security App, and we'll look to see what's inside it in a sec. But let's assign that to Pradeep. And so now that that's assigned, let's reload this app again. And in a second, in a second we see that now he has access to the app, but he doesn't have access to the org-owned or the user-owned records, right? The left nav for the administrator looks different than that for Pradeep. And so let's give Pradeep access to these org-owned records. And what we'll do is we'll open up the security role here. And to get there, by the way, come up here to Advanced Settings. And then we'll come into Security, Security Roles. And then I'm going to open up my Security App role. That's going to open up in a pop-up. And so now under Custom Entities here, we can see the uh, Org Owned here. This is this item here. And at the top here, we've got the, what the different bubbles mean. Create, read, write, delete, append, and append to. Now, things that are org owned don't have these two on the right. Those assigned to only use, those applies to only users and teams. And we'll play with those in a little bit. So let's start with or the, uh, let's see, we've got create, read. Let's just give him read on the org owned records. So now when we save this, We come back to uh, Pradeep's window here and refresh the app. And now we see he has the orgone added to his, uh, to his navigation here. But look, there's no create button. He can read these, but they're all marked read only. And while we're here too, let's also look at the uh, at the API here. So if I come in here, uh, if I look for org owned as the administrator, I can see two records coming back. Those are the two that we saw. And here is Pradeep for org owned. If we refresh this now, he now sees two before. Before there were none when he had, uh, when he had no security role. And so now let's give Pradeep uh, another security role. For the org owned record, we'll give Right. And so now he'll be able to write to existing records, but still won't be able to create them. So now he can write to it, so we get to update like this, but still no way to create new records. Now we can grant him that by being able to come back here and give this first bullet, which is create. And now when we refresh, in a second he'll have the create button. And now we have the new record button, we can create a new one. And now, by the way, you can use these in other ways, too. Like, if we wanted to grant just create but not read or write, we can give pretty the, that combination as well. And then when that takes effect, he'll no longer have the ability to read records. But he'll still be able to add new ones through the API or through Flow. See, now we're getting insufficient permissions here, but we still have the new button. Gives us kind of an interesting situation because we can add another one here. But now he won't have the ability to read the record he just created. And if we come back here, we can see now that record is there, even though Pradeep doesn't have the ability to read it himself.
And if we come back here and refresh the API, right, he's no access to any of the rows, even th through the API. Now you notice this whole time Pradeep didn't have the ability to delete records. Let's add these back in. He doesn't have the ability to delete records, and we can give him that by adding in this fourth bubble here. And now that his reads back too, while we're waiting for that to save, we can update the API here, and we see that now he can read them through the API too. So now he's got that permission back. Oh, there it is. Delete. And now we can delete them. So now let's look at these last two on the right here, append and append two. So these records have a related record here. And so if he wants to use a lookup one, he first does not have the ability to view these related entities from this pick list. And so to do that, we've got to give Pradeep this uh, permission on uh, related record. And we need to give him, in particular, read, the second column. So when we save this, Pradeep will be able to actually see what those what that pick list contains. And then choose one. However, because append and append two need to be assigned, see so is in uh, he does not have sufficient permission to actually create the related relationship between these two records. And you can see here it's telling us that related record uh, needs, and this will give us a little more detail here around exactly what it needs. But the the two that it needs are uh, append and append two, and it needs uh, one on either side of the relationship. And so let's add append two to the related record because we're going to be appending that to our org owned record. And so pen two is this one, I believe, append two. But then we need to add on the other side of the relationship, we need to add append on this. And so that will allow us to append to the org owned record and append to the related record. So let's reopen this record here. And let's try making this association again. And now it completes, and we've got the related record saved. So that's a little bit about org owned and records, and it gives us an ability to kind of explore these core settings for, um, for a simpler entity. Now let's move into user owned entities. So let's first start by taking another look at these records here. So here as the administrator, I have, uh, looks like, how many, nine, nine records with different ownership. And let's first uh, see what, uh, what Pradeep has access to. And so if we come over as Pradeep, see, he doesn't have any access at all. If we come in here through the API, right, the API is the same. So let's give him access to some of them. And also for this one, I built a Canvas app on top of it, and we can see that it's empty for Pradeep, and it has the same nine records for the administrator. So let's come into the security role once again. And we'll come into the row for the user-owned record. And I'm just going to click on the name, and that will give him all at the user level. And this means that he will have access to create, read, write to all the permissions for records that he owns. And so we'll save this, and then we'll come back as Pradeep. Refresh the app. And now we see that he has user owned listed as well. But he doesn't see all nine that are in the system. He only sees one, the one that is owned by him. And if we look in the API, if we refresh this, we can see he only gets one back returned as well. And in the Canvas app, right, pulling off the API, the same thing. So now let's try the opposite. Let's come back in here. And let's give him access to not user, not business unit, not parent child business units, but organization. Let's give him access to everything in the organization. And 
And so let's come back to him. And let's look at our user owned list again. And now he's got access to everything. So this basically opened up the aperture so that he can see everything here. And of course, you know, they're all pulling off the same set of APIs. And so the API, the Canvas app, everything's going to show the same nine records. So now we can dial it back a little bit more. And so Pradeep is part of a business unit. And just to kind of show what my business unit structure looks like, and even though they're called business units, it doesn't mean they have to map one-to-one -to, -one to a business unit in a company. These are really uh, security constructs that you can use in a way that serves the way you want your security model to work. And so Pradeep is currently signed here at the top org level business unit. And then I've got four business units below that. And then below business unit one, I have one subordinate business unit. And just to show you where these are set up in the settings, if we come back here into the settings, we look under security, business units. So there's my org level one, business units one, two, three, and four report to the org one, business unit one A reports to business unit one, just like in that diagram. So Pradeep, he belongs to the org level business unit. So let's change his security role so that he has access only to his business unit directly. So that's user and that's business unit. So let's save this. Now you notice he has access to the same nine, nine because he's in the parent business unit. Now let's move him into a subordinate business unit. In fact, let's move him, let's move him down here into business unit one. And so to do that, what we'll do is we'll take him here and we will change his business unit and we will move him to business unit one. And when we do this, we have to reassign the security role. And then when we come back to Pradeep's window here, we see he has a much smaller scope of records, right? Just those that are owned by the business unit one. And that's because he's been given access to only the business unit records. Now there is this record here that belongs to business unit 1A. And if you remember from our chart, business unit 1A is below business unit 1. And so we could give Pradeep access to child business units as well. And then he would be able to see that 1A record as well. And so here we gave just business unit access. We're going to change this to parent and child business unit access. And notice I'm doing this across all of the circles for create, read, write, delete. Of course, you can set them different per circle so that you could be able to only create for yourself, but be able to read others and all that. But we, since we've already gone over what the different circles mean, I'm really just focusing on now what the different scopes mean at the bottom. So now Pradeep can read his business unit and child business unit. So that should allow him to also see this uh, business unit 1A team. And sure enough, it pops into his view. And so this gives you the ability to use, to set up different hierarchical models and make sure people can view based upon a hierarchy or based upon different sections of the organization. Now let's look, in, look at sharing. And share the ability to share is controlled within the security group based upon this rightmost box here. Now we're gonna go in as an admin and share a record though. And we're gonna share this record here uh, with the business unit one team, with a team that belongs to business unit one. So I'm gonna share it with a team. Actually, let's just share it directly with business unit one since that's where Pradeep is. But we're only going to give them read. We're not going to give them write, delete, append, or anything, anything else. And so what will happen now is if we come back to Pradeep. That fourth record called Access Team Shared now shows up in Pradeep's list. Now Pradeep looks at one of the other ones that he owns. These are all editable. But if we come back and we go to Access Team Shared, 
This one is read only because we gave it to him through sharing and only permitted uh, and only permitted read only access. And of course, if we come back to the API, right, we'll see all four, all four records. And also when we update here, we see all four records because that's pulling through the API. So any app built on top of it as well. So now let's unshare this record. And let's instead share it with what's called an access team. Access teams are teams that are specifically made for being able to share records between, uh, between different users. So I have this access team called access team. We'll sign this, we'll give it a read write this time. And now if we come back and look at the list, we see that that access team shared record is gone. And that's because we shared it with an access team but Pradeep is not a member of that team. And so let's come back in here into security and give Pradeep access to that team. So we're gonna make him a member of that access team called access team. And so let's add him here. And now that he's a member of that team, it should automatically take effect. And when he refreshes these records, now he has access and it should be read write access because that's how it was shared to the team. And so future records shared to this team will also be accessible by him, even if he's not the owner, which he isn't in this case, or if another owner or business unit is, uh, or another team or business unit is the owner of that because it's shared explicitly. Now let's look at other ways of assigning this role to Pradeep. And so let's come back into his user record and let's unassign that role. And so as we might expect, right, this is going to affect his ability to use the app a little bit. And so if we come back here to the API, we see that he no longer has any API level access to the data at all. And of course, uh, he no longer has any access to the app at all. But he is a member of business unit one. We can assign roles to teams as well as people. And so let's come in here to uh, the teams. And, uh, since he's a member of business unit one, let's add that role to business unit one. And so now if we come back here, that should also grant the role to him. And so if we come back to the app here, he has the same level of access that that role applies, right? Those four same four fields, because now they're granted to him through the business unit. Now let's come back to that then, and let's actually remove that role from the business unit. Because there are other ways to get, get the role to him too. Like we could grant it to uh, a team that is inside the business unit. So this is a team, and we can grant that role to a team. Now that won't affect Pradeep until he's actually in the team, right? So if we come back here, And if we come back to him, we see that he, he no longer has access to the application. But if we add him into this team now, not a business unit, but just any team, which gives you more flexibility than business units, because you could have multiple teams for different roles. Now that he's in there, and there's his access back. Now this team, this is a business unit, the team within his business unit, that doesn't have to be the case. We can uh, remove this role here. And we can grant the role to a different team. Let's grant it to the business unit two team. And let's add Pradeep in here. Now this will cause something interesting to happen. Pradeep is in business unit one, but he has a security role that allows him to see this business unit's uh, records. And he's in, a he's in a team now that's related to business unit two. So if we come back here,
we see that he now has, besides the one that is explicitly shared with him, he has these two from business unit two shared with him because his role says that, that it is for the current business unit. And so this allows you then to stack ownership into different teams and be able to control the access across different business units as well to build some very complex security models just through these simple configurations. And so for example, if we add him to uh, a team in business unit three, and we have to make sure that they have the role as well. There we go. Now he gets this business unit three record as well. So you can kind of cross them. And of course, you know, the uh, everything that pulls off the APIs is, is keeping pace as well. And it's worth calling out and maybe goes without saying that everything we've been doing also applies to other ways of accessing this records these records. So if uh, Pradeep was to come in here through advanced fine and do a, you know, and or type query on these records, he's only going to see the records that are permitted based upon his security roles. The same if he goes in through a Power BI report that's accessing the data as him, he's only going to see the data he has access to or a custom app. Now let's look at securing columns. And first I'm gonna show you uh, the wrong way to do it because it shows another way to use security rules in a way that can give you more capabilities for your users. And in particular, I'm coming back in here as the admin and for all of these records, I actually have two forms available to me. I've got this main form, but I also wanna show here that I have a second form configured. And the fields that we're gonna secure are these ones here, field two, field one and field two. And if I come in here and open up the user owned entity, I'll see that I actually have a second form. And so the form we're looking at now is this one. And it has field one and field two on it. And the second form cleverly labeled no secret fields, has field one and field two not displayed on the form. And the reason I wanted to show this, I wanted to show how you could use security rules on forms, but I also wanted to highlight that this doesn't secure the underlying data, this just secures the form. So I'm gonna come in here into these form settings, and we're gonna take this, uh, or not this one, we're gonna take the other form, and we're going to make it so that it's not available to people with the security app role, people like Pradeep. And so here I can see that it's available to people that have the security app role. So we're going to take that out. And we're going to save and publish. And now if I come back as Pradeep, let's refresh this for good measure. Now when I open up one of these forms, I won't have access to this, or when I open up one of these records, I won't have access to this form with the two very secret fields. I'll see the other one that has just the two fields, right? Our quote unquote secret form. But if I come in through the API and look at this, right, I can see uh, field one and field two, right? There's field two and here's field one. So it's not securing the data. Now this can be useful though, if you wanna have show different perspectives on the same data for different users. Maybe if you wanna use the enters data and the other one that reviews just certain field, you can give them their own view on it. Let's undo what we did here. And so let's add in uh, the security app security rule here. And we also have other settings like uh, form order, order, which is if they have access to more than one form, what's the sequence they should come up in, and fallback forms. We're gonna enable uh, this one for fallback as well. Now if we come back here, we should be back to uh, the spot where Pradeep can see the secret fields. And there they are. So now let's look at field security. So let's come back in here and we'll come back into security. So let's start by creating a field security profile for these two secret fields that we want to secure. So create a new field security profile and save it. And then I'll assign which fields are controlled by this profile here. Now we see that our two fields aren't there because we need to go set them as, um, as secure fields. And so we'll come under the user owned entity. And for each of our fields, 
will enable field security. So for field one and field two. Now, as soon as we do this, those fields aren't readable by anyone except via a field security profile. And so if we come back into Pradeep here and refresh his list, those fields are now blank. And if we go into one of these, one of these records, the fields are now blank as well. We refresh our Canvas app. The fields return as null from the API. And here we see field two and field one. If we refresh this API call, we see now they're returning as null. So now that we have those fields in there, we need to give access to them through the field security profile. And so now let's come in and give read only access to these two fields. Now remember, because the APIs are also responsible for all transactions in the, with the data, this, these th this, thing, this change here, like the, ability, the inability to update or create records with these fields, that applies to all uses of this data, Canvas app, custom app, and so on. All right, so now we need, let's add to leap into this here. There he is. And now if we refresh this list here, now we see that he has read-only access to those fields. And so we can see when the form refreshes here, his access is read-only. And now they reappear here in the Canvas app as read-only and they'll appear in the APIs as well, although they won't be updatable through the APIs because of this. And of course, we could set different permissions here. Like, let's allow updates for field one, but not for field two. And so now when we refresh this, now we can see field one is updatable, but field two is not. And for both of these, we haven't granted create. So when he goes in to create a new record, he won't be able to do anything with these two fields. So of course, we have to make sure these aren't required fields because that wouldn't be workable. Now let's remove this from being explicitly assigned from him because a more realistic way that you would use to assign this would be to assign it to a, uh, to a business unit or to a team. Oh, now his access is gone, good. Now let's go into teams. Pradeep is a member of business unit one. So let's add business unit one. And that, that applies this security profile to everyone in this business unit or we can add specific teams too if we wanna have a team that had access to the read or update these fields or specific access, some that could create and some that can't. And now his access to read these is back. He'll have the same access he just had, editable in field one, not on two. And of course that applies to all of these as well. So just to recap, we've looked at organization owned records and we've looked at how the different uh, security settings, create, read, write, delete, append, depend to assign and share, apply to organization records. At least uh, these ones on the left apply to them. And really what those mean, like how do we control what they can append and append to different related records. Uh, for user and team records, we also looked then at how does the business unit hierarchy or how can we use business units to control which records are available to who and what does it mean to assign or share those records. And then we looked at record level security too, which is where sharing comes in. And then finally, at the end, we looked at field security profiles so that we could see how do we control access to specific secure columns so that we could see uh, which ones and who can create, read, or write to them. I hope this is a useful demo of uh, some of the ways you can use some of CDS's built-in security to secure your apps. And most importantly, allow you to offload some of this work to the Common Data Service and make your apps more secure because all of that will happen at the API level. So you won't have report readers that are able to bypass your security. And also all of the work of calculating who can see what happens on, the C on CDS and not in your app. And so that should leave you with better performing apps too. Thanks for watching.